Welcome back to your uh, complete tennis forehand guide. In the last video, we just discussed the uh, grip that we use for our forehand and also our setup positions. In this video, we're gonna be going after the setup into our backswing and also where we make contact and how we make contact with the ball for our forehand topspin. So if you haven't watched the other video on the grip and the setup and would like to watch that, you can head on to that one first and then come back to this video and you can watch uh, the backswing and the contact that we're going to discuss in this video. All right, so let's look at the backswing first. So now we've done the setup and now our backswing starts from here. So now the backswing is very important to understand is the amount of time it takes you to bring the racket back, the amount of time it takes you to bring the racket forward needs to change depending on the shot you're receiving. So there's no one type of backswing for your uh, topspin forehand. So in a ideal rally ball, which is say for example, it takes you one second to do a full backswing and you're able to meet the ball, then for a ball that's coming a bit faster, you cannot do the exact same backswing and expect to meet the ball at the same, uh, same contact. So now the ball is gonna be coming faster, so your contact's gonna be late. So now I need to adjust my backswing to maybe a bit smaller, and now I can meet the racket again at the right contact point. Really important to understand that there's no one backswing. So when you're getting set up, the, we're bringing again, our non-dominant hand is turning our shoulders and our hips after that. And then from here, I'm thinking about bringing my racket to the side not so much bringing the racket to the back. So this is where most of the players struggle with is, is having the back swing is way too big. And then again, like we just discussed, it takes a lot longer for them to bring the racket back to where they're gonna make contact. And they're gonna be a lot of times late. And when we're late, we're not able to use our whole kinetic chain to actually hit the ball. So as the ball is coming towards you, you're getting ready, you got a setup, back swing going towards the side, and then we make a, it's called a C on the forehand. We make a C on the forehand with the racket. And then from here, the racket drops below the height of the ball and then comes through and meets the ball here. Around my front hip or just in front of the front hip, I don't want to make contact here. So the ball is coming fast. I do a smaller backswing so I can make contact here. If the ball is coming high, I need to make sure my backswing gets higher so I can bring the racket to the level of the ball when I'm hitting it. Same idea if I'm hitting the ball lower, if the ball is coming low, I need to get low as I'm getting set up and ready for the ball. I go low with it, and now my backswing is gonna be shorter because I'm already low. And from here, then I can make contact to the level of the ball if the ball is low down here. So you've done your perfect backswing and now it's time to hit the ball. So as you're getting ready and you've done your backswing and you're bringing the racket forward, as we just discussed, we want our contact to be around our front hip and then also maybe in just in front more, but not back here on the back hip. So the contact should be around the front hip, but not the back hip. And I just wanna do a quick drill. Uh, you can do that with me as you're watching this. If you have a doorway nearby, what I want you to do is just, I'm gonna imagine this is the doorway and I'm gonna just put my hand behind it here, get into my forehand position. As you can see, my contact's behind here right now. And I want you to push against the doorway and then feel uh, the amount of pressure on your shoulder and your arm right now. And then go behind the doorway and now come forward here and now push against uh, the doorway from here and you'll feel you're a lot more solid when you're hitting it here as opposed to here, which also creates uh, a lot of tension in your arm, which results in tennis elbow. Um, so if you don't wanna get injured as well, it's very important to consistently make that contact in front of you so you're able to use the whole kinetic chain and make contact using all the big muscles and not just the smaller muscles in the arm. So just to quickly go over the contact points too for different balls. So first we're gonna look at the high one. 
and then we're going to look at the medium or regular height ball here and then a low one and you can notice in all three uh, sections whether it's high medium or low ball my racket angle is parallel to the ground so in order to create top spin on my forehand my racket needs to travel from below the height of the ball meeting the ball as the racket is parallel to the ground so I can keep brushing that ball up to create topspin. If the ball is low and my racket angle is like this, I'm not able to create topspin. And if my, on a high ball, my racket is too high and my angle of the racket is this way, then I'm hitting down on the ball and not creating enough topspin for the ball as well. So medium ball, racket goes down, meets here. High ball, racket still goes down below the ball, meets here, low ball, Racket goes down even lower, and when it meets, it meets parallel to the ground, and then up from there. So now that you made the perfect contact, the next step is to actually finish your stroke, and we're gonna talk about that in the next video, how to do a proper follow through, and how to use the whole kinetic chain to hit your most effective forehand. If you like the video so far, please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the other videos, and the next follow through video will be coming out soon, so I'll see you soon. Thank you, bye.